Hey there gang, time for another comic book unboxing video and as always I have absolutely no idea what is in this box you're looking at right here. We're going to make that discovery together so if you like comic books, stick around, we're going to have some fun. Hey there Bobby, welcome to Shanghala, my name is Duke and this is an unboxing video. So, if you've been here before, you know what's going on. You can skip ahead a few minutes until you kind of see the comic book covers flashing on the screen. If you are new here, here's the 411. I work for an outfit called Vintage Comic Books LLC. It's located in Freeport, Maine. And we do business online at a couple of websites. We buy comic books through a website that is perhaps counterintuitively called sellmycomicbooks.com. And we sell comic books at a site called dotcomcomics.com. Our physical store in Freeport is called Dotcom Comics, and most of the books that we sell end up on eBay, and the seller name there is, wait for it, Dotcom Comics. <laughs> so, uh, this is, uh, is going to be an unboxing video for the books that we sell on eBay as what we call raw singles. That's, a, that's an auction lot of one single comic book that is not you know, graded and slabbed by any company like CGC or, or a similar type service. I'm the guy who grades these books. So if you buy a book on eBay from Dotcom Comics and you don't like the grade, I'm the guy you're mad at. <laughs> and, and don't hesitate uh, to let me know if, if you don't like the job that I, uh, that I do, either through these videos or with the grading. As I always say, if you don't like what I'm doing, let me know. If you do like what I'm doing, by all means, tell my boss. <laughs> so <laughs> we're going uh, to go ahead and move ahead. Uh, please do like, share, subscribe, comment, do all the groovy things. And let's not waste any time. Let's get right to it. And this should be about the point where the uh, the veterans are catching up to us as they see the comics coming on screen. Looks like we're going to have a uh, maybe a Bronze Age box here, starting with uh, the Eternals, and uh, that's some good stuff. Although I have to believe that you know Kevin Feige, maybe a, a few months before he announced the Eternals movie, I'm betting he must have bought a warehouse just full of Eternals comics that he got for like you know ten cents on the dollar. <laughs> <laughs> because up until he announced that movie, that was about the going rate for Eternals books. These are doing well now, though, have been for a while, but the movie is due out imminently. Uh, some people are uh, already starting to post reviews, so um, we'll have to see what happens. If they plateau, if they crash, uh, I think that will all depend on the quality of the movie, but at any rate, here is number three. Spawn, uh, and again, the veterans, the people who've watched uh, a number of these videos of mine, you will know that that's something we see in, well, just about every box. <laughs> Seems like every collection we buy has one or two spawns in it, and when the owner sorts those collections and parses things out into different sales streams, rather they are going to go to CGC, uh, which is what we do with any book that we expect is going to sell for more than 100 bucks. We'll send it to CGC, it'll get graded and slabbed, and we sell those on a third-party site called comiclink.com. The books that we expect to sell between, you know, 10 and 100 bucks, those go up on eBay as raw singles. Other things are uh, multi-book lots, if we think it'll take, you know, a few books to reach that sort of $10 plateau that we look for. But yeah, Spawn is a, a good seller. You know, there's a, a million billion of these issues but uh and they're all high grade but it, it is a consistent you know 15 20 dollar seller every time out of the gate and here's the other big one from the run spawn number nine first appearance of angela godzilla number one that's a good book and that's a that's a pretty nice grade there at least at least looking at it in the bag i'll know more you know after this video is over i'll debag everything and sit down to do my actual grading but that's a good book X-Men 221, um, got a few tick marks here, but that's the first appearance of Mr. Sinister. X-Men 201, first appearance of Cable, albeit um, as a baby, and uh, that's something we see a lot. It's a newsstand edition. The Mr. Sinister book, also a newsstand edition. So all things being equal, those should bring kind of a premium over a direct sales copy, which would have nothing in the UPC code or a little character, and the pricing box is sometimes different. Uh, but the newsstand, by this era, by the uh, late 80s, early 90s, your, your newsstand sales were about 15, 20%. By the mid-90s, early mid-90s, uh, down to about 10% of the entire print run. 
So those uh, those are uh, more highly coveted. This this would be highly coveted, but I might pull this out uh, because I do that sometimes. If I if I look at a book and I don't think it's going to bring at least ten bucks, um, I'll pull it and uh, stick it in a multi book lot. And this one's pretty low grade. And it looks like the uh, the cover might even be detached. Uh, it is. It's completely detached. So no way do I think that's going to bring ten bucks. Let me know in the comments below. Would you pay ten bucks for a uh, Wonder Woman 204 with the cover detached? And that's not necessarily the owner's fault. I mean, he's he's uh, sorting these books quickly from the collections as they come in, and you know, probably wouldn't have realized that the that the cover's detached. Um, might not even have had a chance to really look at it, you know, closely. He's just kind of going bang, 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 bang. <laughs> Because we have we have collections coming in every day from all over the country, all over the world. But yeah, I think I'm going to set that aside. That's going to be a book that I'm going to have stuck in a multi-book lot. Uh, X-Men 191, I think that's the first appearance of Nimrod. Marvel Chillers, much like The Eternals, this is a book that uh, until not too long ago was kind of a dollar book. But it's getting so, you know, the 25 cent books, 20, 25 cents. Even many of the 30, 35 cent cover price books, which would have been around 77, 78, getting so that those will sell fairly decently. So we'll try that as a single, sure. This is low, low grade, but uh, it is, it's a nice Tiger Shark cover. I think it's the first appearance of Tiger Shark. Not 100% sure. I'll have to look that up. But you can see there's a chunk out of the spine here and lots of ticks, but... God, and a lot of damage here as well. I might pull that one out. I'm not sure that we'll get 10 bucks as a single. That should probably be a you know, lot of low-grade Submariner books. Uh, X-Men 164, new stand edition. This is uh, the first appearance of Carol Danvers in her short-lived binary persona. Not binary as in terms of gender, but in terms of uh, star power. <laughs> Oh, this is nice. House of Secrets, number 73. Somebody thought this was a $50 book at one time. Uh, I don't think this will go for 50 bucks, but um, it should do well. Eclipso is a little out of proportion here, I think. He's looking kind of Hobbit-like. <laughs> but anyway, Eclipso is the villain on uh, the current season of Stargirl. Do you watch Stargirl on the uh, CW? I really enjoy that show. It's the one... Well, actually, I take that back. It's one of two CW superhero shows that I'm currently watching, Stargirl and then Lois and Superman. Uh, both of those shows are pretty good. The rest of the CW shows, I... Yeah. <laughs> Some of them, like Batwoman, were trash from the beginning. Some of them, like The Flash, have just fallen, fallen so far out of favor with me. But uh, I don't know. Let me know. What do you think? Which shows are you watching on the CW? And if you aren't watching Stargirl, uh, I recommend that. So here's uh, Daredevil 101, during the period when it co-starred Black Widow. Here's another copy, same issue, number 88, with Kilgrave, the Purple Man, who literally was purple at one time. All right, let's see what we've got in the next stack. Some more Daredevil, Daredevil number 41. This is the death of Mike Murdock, who was, uh, well, he wasn't... Initially a real person, he was a persona that Matt Murdock adopted, pretending to be his own twin brother, kind of a, um, a soap opera kind of plot. Uh, you, know, you know, it was a, a thing he did to sort of protect his secret identity. Uh, in more recent years, though, I mean, Mike Murdock disappeared for a couple of decades, two or three decades, but in more recent years, uh, that persona was made real by some cosmic forces, I forget exactly what, and was actually appearing in recent issues of uh, Daredevil. This is a classic cover. This one always does well in any kind of decent grade. I'm flipping it over because the back felt like it might have some water damage, but I guess it's all right. Well, that's, a, uh, that's a classic, iconic cover right there that always does well. Here is Daredevil Dead, but uh, as usual, they tend to get better. Number 50... Six, seventy-eight on the horns of the man bull. <laughs> I don't know why that struck me as funny. Uh, one hundred two with stilt man. I do love the stilt man. I, I hope and I pray that we get 
some stilt man uh, as Daredevil comes into the uh, MCU proper. If we get a Daredevil movie, we're going to have at least a stilt man cameo. 105 with Moondragon. Black Widow. There's 115. Black Widow is still co-starring, but she's kind of lost the title spot here by this point. Here's the classic issue, The Death of Elektra, number 181. Very nice. Here's a, uh, a classic uh, cover of Captain America. You know who this is. And they even tell you, no mystery. <laughs> Captain America and the Falcon, just like uh, Black Widow co-starred with uh, Daredevil for a short time, the Falcon co-starred in Captain America for quite a while. Quite a while. And you know, they tended to not leave a lot of room for the cover image, but boy, they crowded a lot in here. Uh, with a character who I believe was called, yeah, the Phoenix. So this was before the Jean Grey Phoenix. Oh, there's another one. This is, I believe, this is the second appearance of the Falcon. You see he had a different costume initially and no wings. Took him a long time to actually give him flight. Uh, he's, his big deal initially was just being able to talk to the bird. <laughs> talk to the bird. <laughs> but... Um, yeah, it really did. It took them quite a while to give him a set of wings and uh, and give him flight. But he had this uh, green costume to begin with, with a little bit of falcon bling here, that uh, that necklace. But I believe that's his second appearance. I think he made his first appearance in 117. Here's some more of the uh, classic Frank Miller run on Daredevil, number 184, 183. There's some Iron Man, 120, with Submariner. Very nice. Bob Layton, some of the early Bob Layton art on the title. And uh, Bob really, really kind of made that classic run during the uh, Demon in a Bottle phase, in my opinion. Spider-Man 2099, number one. Here's some more Iron Man, this time with Thor. Iron Man was not, you know, we think today with, uh, well, thanks in large part to Robert Downey Jr., we think of uh, Iron Man as kind of a cornerstone of the Marvel Universe, but for a long time, he was like a B-list, C-list title. Didn't sell that well. And during this period, anyway, got a lot of co-stars trying to boost him up. Here is Static number one. That's a pretty big deal. Dennis Cohen, always a good artist. Hey, we just saw that one. There's another one. Let's see what else we've got here. We're making good time. I think we're going to do this whole box in one video. What do you think? Here's the uh, classic uh, logo clutching cover of uh, X-Men, number 56. And as I recall, I seem to have read somewhere in the fan press that there was a lot of controversy at this time that having this character grab the logo, um, the artist uh, really had to fight for that. And initially, I think the initial version had the logo even cracked. Somewhere, I feel like I've seen that original artwork somewhere. Here's the death of Jean Grey, 137. This is a, that's a classic story, if you've never read that. This whole original Dark Phoenix saga, if you've never read it, you should. You really, really should. Lo, there shall be an ending. No, in comic books, nothing ever ends. <laughs> it just goes and goes and goes. Pop art, so about three months there. Uh, Stan Lee was kind of embarrassed uh, calling it Marvel Comics that was deemed junk fiction, but uh, pop art was becoming a big cultural thing. You know, during the, um, what's his name, Lichtenstein, who did the, uh, the comic book inspired paintings. And so for about three months, Marvel had this uh, pop art productions logo, which I guess was meant to capture the zeitgeist of the time and make comics more appealing to the college crowd, which they already were. But uh, it didn't take, and people complained, and they soon went back to just being plain old Marvel comics. There's another pop art. That's number 42. Classic story, This Man, This Monster. That's a must read. If you've never read that one, that's one you, you definitely need to. 57, Enter Doctor Doom. This one does really well on eBay because of that uh, classic cover with the Silver Surfer. This one's just kind of a weird cover, I've always thought. But <laughs> and the face on the thing just always strikes me as funny. Here's a, a rare appearance of Wyatt Wingfoot on the cover. That's a classic cover, and I've seen that. You've seen that on lots of um, merchandise and things like that. 
by Ben Betrayed. There's number 91, The Thing Enslaved. 92. And you can really tell that uh, The Thing was kind of the most popular character. There's number 100. That's cool. Backing up a bit to number 93. And again, it's a Thing cover. Thing really was the, uh, the big deal. This is nice. Journey into Mystery number 112. The Thunder God versus the Incredible Hulk. Very, very nice. Nice Jack Kirby cover. It's a little rough here on the spine, but that is, uh, that is still nice. That'll do well. And that is some nice, um, is that Joe Sinnott? I'll have to look it up, but I think that's uh, Joe Sinnott. And he had a really nice, heavy contour line that I feel like made the art pop. Um, and, you know, the same on Fantastic Four. Although you watch, I'll look that up, and it's not Joe Sinnott. <laughs> but whoever it is, that's a good job. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man 301, very nice. Uh, echoing the uh, cover from number 300, Todd McFarlane. I've always felt like this is something that maybe Todd was late. I mean, I don't know. Todd's not going to watch this video, but if he does, maybe he'll uh, let me know in the comments below rather or not this is true. But I've always felt like, was he late with the cover for this issue? So they just kind of reused the cover from 300? <laughs> Changed it a little bit? I don't know. Here is New Mutants number 100. Last issue of that series. There's Thor. This one's always hard to get in high grade because of the white cover. New Gods number one. That's nice. Kirby is here because for a month or so anyway leading up to this, DC trumpeted in house ads, Kirby is coming. Well, finally Kirby was here. And it didn't last very long. <laughs> Kirby didn't stick around. <laughs> uh, 155. Classic, classic copy. I've said classic. This is a good box. You know, the more times I use the words classic and iconic, um, that we're into a good box. But this is the uh, Steve Ditko uh, sequence that really sort of defines Spider-Man for a lot of people. This is sort of like the seminal issue. And just that whole sequence, it's like a three or four page sequence where he's trapped under this machinery and starts to give in, but finally... You know, digs deep and finds it within himself to, to break free. And it's just cool the way that uh, Ditko paces that and, uh, and just, you know, takes the time to really... You know, I often complain about comic books these days being too decompressed. But this is an example of how that decompression, when used sparingly, can be very, very effective. Because, again, it takes about three pages, maybe even four, I forget... Uh, to sort of cover that ground where it's just it's just Spidey trapped under this machinery and struggling and thinking, you know, how am I going to get out? I'm never going to get out. I can't do this. I've got to do this. Um, and finally, with a full page panel, you know, after building up with a bunch of smaller panels, uh, that full page one where he boom, busts free. It's just really, really amazing. And I've just, I've never noticed before, but the water kind of pouring over this, uh, Giant bolt almost looks like a spider, doesn't it? <laughs> With the little legs here. Um, huh. The things you notice. All right. Journey into Mystery 124 with Hercules. Here's kind of a random issue of uh, Superman, number 230. I believe this is after Julius Schwartz took over the, uh, the editing. Or maybe it's not. Mort Weisinger, uh, the uh, DC editor through all of the 60s, late 50s into the 60s, I think he retired in 69 or 70. So this would be right around the time maybe Julie Schwartz took over. If it isn't, if it isn't by this issue, it's shortly. But this here, this is uh, definitely a Mort Weisinger issue. Uh, Superman, the two faces of Superman. Nice. Very nice. Here, uh, like Spawn, this is another one we see about two or three of in every box. Uh, and this is the uh, direct sales copy of Spider-Man number one. Originally came in a poly bag. Uh, and this is the silver edition. This is the gold edition. So this is actually the second printing of that silver edition we just saw. And this one actually um, 
this would have been uh, sold without a poly bag. You see the price uh, versus no price. I'll have to check this because there's, there's about six or seven different versions of this book. Make sure that is what that is, the one with the no price is just that it was came in a poly bag originally. So now the spawn number one, I told you, a couple in every every box. Here's another popular book we see a lot of, Wolverine. And uh, if you haven't uh, heard me say this before, when you get this book, rather you are buying or selling, always check that back cover. Half of the cover is a deep black ink that usually picks up fingerprints and things like that, and that can really bring down the grade of the book. Ghost Rider number one from the 90s, and that again was a dollar book for a long time, but that is getting to be a dependable $15, $20 seller. This is the uh, the wedding issue, Amazing Spider-Man Annual number 21, and this is the uh, direct sales friends and family cover. The one that went out to the newsstand was the um, uh, friends and foes cover that had all the, the villains and whatever behind it. Journey into Mystery number 118. Teen. Werewolf by Night. That's an early appearance of Moon Knight. I forget if it's the second or third. His first appearance, I believe, was in number 32. Tomb of Dracula number 12. That's nice. Very nice. Here's another Iron Man 120 we just saw. Oh, very, very nice. And this looks like 